study, Cleveland ranks number three of the top stressed cities in the country. Dear people of the world, especially the state of Ohio and just those all across the country, I ask, could you help me build a community into making this video go viral for the state of Ohio because we are not okay and I don't have support from my hometown. Suicide has become the second leading cause of death within our Ohio children, teens, and young adults, which also explains the stress levels arising within Cleveland, Ohio's unemployment rates, suicide levels, and broken homes. And I'm going to explain why we are experiencing these unjust acts within the state of Ohio and how they've been ignored for the last 20 years. And it's just time we build a community to put an end to it once and for all, because it's not only hurting us, it's hurting our children and our children's future. They deserve to live and it should not be ignored. With number one being drugs. These videos are right here is when I lived in a very racist neighborhood. Law enforcement kept pulling me over and just messing my life up. And I couldn't even go out the door with my children without someone overdosing. My first day moving in was very scary. I had put on Facebook that my neighbor had overdosed and died. Not only that, I had also helped a woman over there save someone's life who went down to do a push-up and never came back up. And on top of it, it was hard to keep the drug addicts out of my yard playing basketball with my children because I had to watch out for needles and sores for my children's safety. I had also invited a little girl from next door named Abigail to my home to keep her safe, although she was taken by CPS from getting sexually assaulted from within... Um, her instability within that home. I helped a lot of mothers from the poverty area. We're even taking their children in as my own. And number two, being racism. Racism is the most scariest thing you can experience, especially when I lived on a street where I was the only black person. Not only that, in that neighborhood back in the 90s, you could not walk in that neighborhood without a gun being pointed on you if you were from the black community, which two of my school age children had experienced when an old man pointed a gun at them for touching his gate for wanting to play with his grandchildren. The most scariest form of racism that I've experienced is this video I'm about to show you now where my neighbor and I are arguing and I'm really cussing him out and he's yelling out, there's blood on your door, there's blood on your door because he had just woke me up out my sleep, beating down my door, screaming that he was gonna kill me and my son for my son breaking in his home. We're later finding out my son never broke in his home. So I put it on live recordings. Where he cut himself, put blood on my door and tried to frame my son. <laughs> it's not on my motherfucking door. You just knocked on my door. You just be on my door. You're not about to do that one, bruh. You got me fucked up. Eddie ain't been home since three days before school was out. You ain't even seen my son. And I know what you're doing. You got me fucked up. You not about to do that to my son. Period. You ain't seen him. Lonnie ain't seen him. The neighbors ain't seen him because he ain't been here. You just did some bullshit, bitch. You just did he ended up feeling guilty once the police told him that they had the teenager in custody that broke into his house. He was listening to these really racist neighbors next door who would call the police endlessly for everything to the point where the police quit responding, but they allowed them to point 10 cameras in my yard. These acts have been going on with the very next door neighbor since the time I moved in, where he acted like he was going to bash my past best friend's car at the time and was talking really loud at one of my siblings to where it almost became confrontation and I calmed it down. The police even asked me, why don't I retaliate? And I told them because it's not worth it and I was not confrontational until he put that blood on my door. Not only was he prejudiced, but his son was too. And I tried to explain that to my son who wouldn't listen until one day they got pulled over and his son put a loaded gun under my son's seat and threw a blunt onto him, one for being underage, two for being the only black male in a car trying to play the race car, but the police was not prejudiced and told me to pick my son up and charge him for the gun, which caused my son to listen to me and go back to being a really great young man that he is. This young man from a child to an adult and he has always been very respectful, a very good guy. One day he was in my neighborhood and a group of white men tried to jump him and one called him the N-word and that's where they heard me roar that night like ever and they moved away from my home and left him alone. These are things that we have to deal with. being police brutality. Starting with police harassment, when they see that you have a black male in the car, they pull you over, ask where the two of you are going and who is this male to you. And when you ask them, what is that their business? And that is not their business. They would then say, oh, you're being a smart ass. No, I'm not being a smart ass. It's just none of your business. And I still want to know why you pulled me over. Something you never stated. The harassment got so bad one day a sheriff followed me through a light all the way to my interview and the cleaning man happened to see him follow me up the hill and told me honey sometimes you got to call the police on the police so when an officer decided to tow my car with license and insurance i took it to trial and the judge asked him why did he tow my car and he didn't have an answer johnson did things like this as well 
Officer Johnson was known in the poverty area to stalk and harass a lot of the black community as a gang. Not only that, jumping out on our children, searching them without an adult present, which is illegal. And because he failed to do his job as a police officer and protect the people of Hamilton, Ohio, he has been caught. So Officer Johnson is now suffering from his consequences because he has been doing these acts over 20 years and they are just now catching up with him. And because police officers like Officer Johnson and a lot of other officers who go in the poverty area stalking and harassing the black community, jumping out on our children without an adult present, and just doing a lot of unjust acts, well, Officer Johnson's actions has caught up with him where he had to be terminated from the police force after vandalizing someone's car. And he was also known to take the drug dealer's drug money and their cars and make the drug dealer cars police cars. I've been a witness to it where the police officers came in a room, put guns up to me, my children's father's head, and our one-year-old son's head, and demanded I take off my son's diaper while they searched his bottom for drugs. And these are the things that the law enforcement do, and they also keep us in a state of selling fentanyl for the doctors and themselves, locking us up from children to just adults and to our black men become tired. This black man right here had a sister who was shot in her face and robbed, and she still has yet received her justice. Neither have any families within the poverty area who is sitting here with multiple Cold cases. These officers are also setting our black culture of men and women up as well, where they are raiding their locations and telling the black woman if she doesn't tell on her children's father, she's not getting out of jail. And then they get the drugs, keep the money. While the doctors continue to put fit knock among the streets, even to kill their own people. So it's not a black and white thing. And I was a victim to that situation where Detective Barber told me that he knew that I was innocent and that that was not my hotel room and that he had been watching the hotel room, but they needed me to be in the room to build a case against my children's father where he would take the charge. I have never in my life smoked a drug in a prison, but I've witnessed on the phone how security guards are allowing the inmates to pay them to let people throw drugs over the gate while the security guard run and smuggle them through the prison. Are you taking theory? Yeah, we know some women go smuggle drugs for the guys, but how are they getting cell phones in the prisons? Because ain't no woman sneaking no cell phone in no Dorito bag. I promise you. I just want to take two small minutes to tell my experience before I'm going to be to other families. As a black woman who just got drugged through a drink by a police officer back in 2022. Not to mention taking the police on an hour fling from being set up by my own family who did not have to go in the courtroom and watching my own mother stand on the side with the sibling who set me up and nearly got me killed that night with my daughter in the car. And how they also set me up in a courtroom with fabricated lies. Falsely convicted as a felon in 2010, representing my own self in 2014 for them to tell me the charges should never occurred and that they were deleting them. After they denied me in front of the magistrate three times and I lost the baby and seek no medical assistance. At the time of them framing me, I had just adopted my foster cousin because my aunt was known to hit her with a curtain rod and she went to jail for it. And my little cousin kept running away. So they asked me, could I just take her in and adopt her? And when the police did that, they took her back to foster care. A black woman who also caught the juvenile system drugging my son with the narcotics behind my back. And after I told them not to, they also ran him under government insurance. When I had insurance through my employment, and they also put my address on the pill bottle when they knew that he was under their care. And when I caught them, the nurse, Miss Diane, went to act delusional when I confronted her about it. Since I caught them giving my son a narcotic drug, I decided it was best for me to join these Zoom meetings they had every month to get updates of my son and to make sure I was involved as a parent. But to move on, they end up relocating him to another juvenile system in Circleville, Ohio called DYS. And the last time my son was incarcerated there, he called me out of a concern to inform me that the security guards were leaving a group of inmates in their cells by themselves on a pie without checking on them or feeding them, which caused them to start banging their heads against the wall from hallucination. Not only that, a nurse sent my other son home, 800 sugar level, DKA with Keystone. Oh, and your EMCs left me to die in my home in 2015, the NIME services. I ended up getting cut with a scalpel four times. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic at a local urgent care, not only did I experience a very high level of disrespect, but also an evasion of privacy when Dr. Caver decided to tell my business in front of other patients. And not only that, he looked down in my breast area when I told him that it wasn't right. And I also reported this to my psychologist that night after Dr. Caver's nurse, Caroline, put me in a room, apologized for his mistakes, and gave me a number to make a report when they told me they was going to reach back out, and I have yet heard from them.
I've also been a victim of being sexually assaulted, not one time, but two times, the very first time by my very own children's father, who I told no to, and he decided to do yes with me informing him that it wasn't going to mean anything. I think it's very important that I mention number four, which is employment. My very first assistant living home experience was I met a lady named Miss Frankie. She was less than 70 pounds, could no one get her to eat. She was only drinking one little sip of Insure. And before you know it, I got her to eat. I taught her how to walk again. And not only that, she learned how to walk to the dining room to eat whole meals on her own. And from that point, a lot of residents' families was looking for me because my name began to ring very high within these nursing facilities. Me and the cook had to go to the supervisor's office one day for getting into a confrontation because he did not make my resident a place stating that she never eats, but he is still supposed to offer her food. Me and other caregivers had gained bonds because we had to go behind the nurse's bag to inform the resident's family members to take them to the hospital when there was emergencies because the nurses would ignore us. And there was an experience where we had a resident who was struggling from constipation and because the nurse did not take her serious, she passed elimination through her mouth. And we will also do cognitive tests for the nurses on the residents as far as having them read and count coins. Time, the same woman who was shot in her face and robbed and left as a cold case was working with me as well. And she had to get back to work or she couldn't feed her children after her big trauma. <laughs> The first traumatic experience was working in my first nursing home where I was not state tested, but I was working on the floor illegally as a STNA without being certified because they did not have enough workers and I was the only one that qualified with the skills to perform tasks on the residents or they would not have anyone to care for them. And on top of that, there was a nurse named Sherelle. She would cuss at the residents, be rude to the families. And when I pulled out my phone, like the second day of me working, another aide told me I better put my phone away or I would get fired if I recorded her actions cussing at the residents. She was also known to give one of the residents oral sex. And not only that, she had gotten caught letting a resident snort a pill. And it got as far as she and another resident having a confrontation where she poured water on him and he was about to attack her and both she and the resident had to go to jail that night and they still allow her to keep her job from being understaffed of nurses. I have never seen a madhouse like this before. You had drug addicts in the nursing home stealing from the elderly. They were getting drunk. They were overdosing almost every day and a lot of people were not getting showers or fed. A former police officer named Christina, who did agency work as a STNA in our facility, had told a dementia nurse that a resident did not feel good and was running a fever. The nurse ignored her, and next thing you know, Christina had to perform breathing procedures while we pour ice on a woman to save her life because she was going to die in front of her mother. That was the most scariest experience ever. This nursing home had in fact hired me and other black women with marijuana in our systems. I was in fact the only black woman invited to a nurse's party where they shoved party drugs up their nose and I left the party early for those reasons. And this is why this facility has been shut down. And the fact that another resident named Gail went viral all over Facebook when she was left in soil and her feeding tube had exploded. I can go on and on about the levels of racism within these jobs, especially at Ford Motors. When I first started working there, four Caucasian guys was bullying me, which led for me to have to go see a psychologist and for my manager, Will, at the time to call a meeting where they then later made a newsletter stating that no bullying will be tolerated. Not only that, you have the workers and those of union management getting drunk and overdosing. When I first started working there on second shift, everyone was sneaking liquor in. There were a lot of people overdosing. One guy fell in a conveyor and they kept sitting him off the rehab and he kept coming back overdosing until they had to get rid of him. These are a lot of things that's being ignored. It's a lot of people drinking with their management. Union, you can smell it on their breath. And because the levels of racism is so high, my manager, he ended up just going to get another job. And then you got the Uncle Tom in the high positions throwing a blind eye to the levels of racism that you're experiencing, trying to act like they don't see these things to save their positions. One Caucasian guy kept calling me names, stupid and dumb. And that's where all the other Caucasian people were sitting around not saying nothing. So a black woman from the black culture had asked him, hey, why are you calling Jocelyn's names since nobody has spoke up for me? Not only did Logan make fun of me, but he will also carry these bullying acts within this group chat that our league has started within a department 
women making fun of another guy from the black culture named Todd about his height and that's where we start to see prejudice and the fact that my psychologist had to take me off of work for two weeks because one day I was on the back line Logan kept starting I started crying and just stood up for myself and that's where my uncle Tom manager act like he didn't see nothing and that's where my supervisor supervisor from the white culture came up to me and showed me pictures of his granddaughter who was biracial and told me keep my head up and don't let it sweat me when you show them that you're unbothered, they'll keep pressing until you stand up for yourself. Then they want to label you as a mad black woman when they are bullying you. And the women's attitude in there is very horrible as well. A lot of managers are bullying. So after a lot of bullying, um, especially, like I said, within management as well, watching a man have a heart attack on the line from them overworking us. We're always at work. We're never at home with our children. And just going through things like this, I just quit myself because it's not worth it. Number five, guns. Guns are the leading cause of death all across America in today's world. Not only are the gun violence on a rise increasing rapidly within the poverty areas of the black communities, but they are arising rapidly in the hands of our police who is pulling triggers on our black women, men, and children. Under the state of Ohio, you do not have to have a permit to carry a gun, not even in public. And that is very dangerous and they know that within the poverty areas, especially with our younger community of young adults and teenagers. Not only that, it has always been passed under our law, under Ohio, that we are able to have guns within our homes as a form of self-defense and protection, which is also the leading reason why a lot of children has been known to shoot each other or even shoot themselves within a home, finding the guns that don't need to be in there. And this is the number one rate of accidental death within the children. And not only that, a woman from my hometown, a woman was trying to fight her, came to her residence, tried to walk in her residence to attack her. The woman opened shot fire to defend herself and she had a permit and they threw her in jail for two years before they realized that they wrongfully convicted her. Jill Barry Godsey represented Robertson through the appeals process. If you are in your home, and somebody unlawfully enters your home, Ohio law protects you, and you are presumed to have acted in self-defense. In this case, Barry Godsey says Robertson wasn't protected. Robertson, a legal gun owner, shot and injured a woman who entered her Springfield Township home and assaulted her. Yet Robertson was convicted of felonious assault and sentenced to five years in prison. An appeals court tossed out the conviction last month because of flawed jury instructions. The predominant error was that failure to instruct the jury about the fact that Tira was presumed to have acted in self-defense in this instance. Prosecutors can still retry Robertson, but for now, she's free. Not only was Springfield Township the one that arrested her wrongfully and kept her in jail this whole time, but they was also the ones that came up to my car on April 27th of 2022 without anybody came on when I was never pulled over, which led me to go on an hour-long fleeing after a Hamilton Police Department officer had become a new officer right down the street three minutes from me in my new community after I started speaking out against the corrupted Ohio local government systems. He asked me on a date, slipped one through my drink where I could not remember and I have not heard from him since, nor that dang on detective who was on the case. The year 2020 was the most scariest, not only for me, but all the mothers in the black poverty community area of my hometown. Our sons were just in the biggest shootouts all of them end up going to JDC for gun charges and it was uncontrollable. I was at work all the time and I could not be home. And at that point, all I can do was pray and ask God to lock my son up to keep him safe because he deserved to know what a happy, successful, healthy life is. And my oldest son will experience a really nice life because he deserves that. I've been a victim of gun violence where my children's father had put guns to my head multiple times and spit on me. And one time he even held me hostage in my apartment. And that's where my mother had to go get my middle sibling who put a stop to it. Not only did he threaten to blow my home up and shoot our son in the head on his sixth grade graduation after missing his ceremony, he allowed his girlfriend to call my children whores and said that she hoped that they died. And not only that, he scraped my son's head up and his girlfriend messed my car up. The divine God knew it was best for me to be at work that day. All of this for the name of love. I have never in my life disrespected this girl and I moved right down the street from me, which made it worse and inspired me to move out of the poverty area. And I did. And I was also able to catch up with her sister that was just like her. We have the drug dealers putting the guns in our teenage son's hands in the poverty areas, promoting them to gang violence, which is leading them to gun violence.
And because of that, a lot of our teenagers are having massive shootouts against each other in the poverty areas. A lot of our teenagers are getting hurt due to gun violence and even losing their lives at very young ages. 88% of Ohio's juveniles are incarcerated for gun-related charges. One is as young as 10 years old. It's even worse when the drug dealers are manipulating our teenage sons, telling them, hey, if you take the rap for my dirty murder crime, you will get less time. Young adults and teenagers, that is not true. Judges will charge you as an adult at a teenage. They are now over sentencing young adults and charging the teenagers as adults. And when you go to jail, life move on. People move on and they will forget about you. And that is lonely. If they do the crime, they do their own time because evidently they wouldn't do the time for you. Because if they would, they would admit to their own crimes and wouldn't need you to go to jail for them. That means they will not go to jail for you because they're not going to jail for themselves. The final one, number six, mental illness. And a lot of it comes from narcissistic, toxic, family structure broken homes where the father is beating on a mother in front of the children i've witnessed a mother be so drunk that she would pass out in front of her children her son would have to protect her she don't even know who slept with her and i even experienced her french kissing her daughter while under the influence and i had to ask the neighbors to watch her children and kind of distance her and when i told her about her when she sobered up i know that she really felt bad but she wouldn't even remember the guys who took advantage of her or even being taken advantage of while she was intoxicated things like that children remembers and that's why a lot of the time children become grown and they cannot stand to be around their parents and they just move away because they're toxic. There's a lot of broken homes in the poverty areas due to the men beating on the women in front of the children in the home. The women yelling at the children, name calling them, which caused the biggest strain of mental illness from verbal and mental abuse, which is worse than physical abuse. You also have the fathers shaving their sons' heads, punching the daylights out of them, and embarrassing them all over the internet, which my oldest son had experience with his father with almost getting choked half to death, which caused a lot of mental illness. And then when they express how they feel and cry and show emotion, they are told to shut up, quit crying like a girl, and not able to express their emotional side, which makes them pained on the inside, and that pain turn into anger, and this is why they run in the streets. One of my siblings, I witnessed whoop his daughter like she was a little boy with a belt. And I want you guys to know, if you hit your daughter, you give another man permission to hit your daughter. We have to find out better ways to communicate. Girls cannot talk to their mothers because mothers are so attackful that they sneak and do things and become pregnant at young ages. Because they have no guidance or no parents to teach them. Because the parents are not trying to be taught and they are putting things like clubs and toxic behaviors in front of their children. The young youth of teenagers are running wild because the parents are not allowing them to make the necessary mistakes that they need to grow and to learn from. A lot of people are accustomed to believe that belts, switches, cords, and brooms are a form of structure when it's not. It's a form of child abuse and it's not funny and it hurts. And they laugh at it. Oh, mama used to beat me with a belt. Mama used to beat me with a bat. Mama beat me with a stench cord. That is not funny. And we are taught to laugh at these traumas. And these are the same things we carry on to our children. I really didn't know how dark my family was until recently. I was at work one day, this was back in 2021, and my oldest cousin had called me to vent. A lot of people vent to me, even people I don't know. And she had expressed that her mother would dress her up and sell her to men. And I said, what? And she said, yeah, my mother would dress me up for men. And her mother was a preacher before she died. Her mother was a preacher which I will discuss in a whole nother video on what it was like being raised in a Christian family. Many of us are just not aware that our family is deep rooted within narcissistic and manipulative behaviors, especially within our parents who always fall victim after controlling our lives. And this is why I mentioned a lot of us move away from our parents because they don't find what they're doing is a problem. Just like my mother didn't got my children taken. When she and this sibling refused to leave my home, even worse, called the police on me, said that I had a mental illness when they wouldn't leave 
my home and nothing was wrong with me. They just didn't like the fact that I aired them all out on Facebook that day. Now she don't want to be bothered with them. She just cussed at them like she cussed at me and my siblings growing up and I have to help them maneuver through these situations. Have I always been a perfect mother? Absolutely not. But I always try to be by apologizing to my children when I was wrong and fixing toxic behaviors within myself because I did not like how it made me feel or how it made them feel because I grew up from a child to an adult with a mother who would cuss and cuss and cuss at us and just didn't want to be bothered. And that right there made me cuss at my children. And once I started feeling like I was becoming my mother, I knew we had to go to family therapy and that saved our lives. We became happier and healthier as a family. As you can see, I lived the life of a black man and black woman as a single mother of six children, overcoming past abuse within relationships as well. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. After all the pain that I've endured in life from traumatic past relationships, taking on the whole local government system by myself, getting drugged by a police officer through a drink that's still been ignored, falsely convicted as a felon, and all of these acts, that they are wrongfully doing, not being compensated and being failed without my present closure, being just abandoned and disrespected by my toxic family, losing my children, losing all that I own, I have nothing, nothing. And this is why suicide is at the most highest rate because we are tired. We're just tired from the abuse and traumas that we are experiencing under the corrupted Ohio local government systems. And we won't forget about toxic families. And people of Ohio, as you can see, one person should not go through as much things as I've went through and these things have been ignored constantly. It takes a village to uplift each other. When we don't go and vote, go to city council meetings, call these things out right when they happen, change do not happen. When you don't uplift people who is fighting for your state, I don't even live there no more. Nothing ever grows. And it's not fair to our children who are suffering in poverty. And not only that, when I move from that home state, these other states I've been to, they do not experience police brutality. Because you want to know why? If the police think they're going to do something to these citizens, these citizens come together. They shine light on it together. And they tackle it right then and there. And this is why they are so diverse and not divided like the state of Ohio. Full of Republicans and not one Democrat. We are enslaved under our own state, and this is why I refuse to be there, because I am my own leader. And if you give them the power to feed you, you give them the power to starve you and kill you. According to a new study, Cleveland ranks number three of the top stressed cities in the country. Dear people of the world,